Now in learning objective C, I'm going to show you what is called the periodicity theorem. First thing we need to talk about is what are circular functions? Now if you think about it, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent graphs that we derived, remember for our pictures the cosine is the C shape, the sine is the S shape, the tangent is this new shape we saw today. Where did those come from? Well, we went around the unit circle and we got the values from it. So the sine, cosine, or tangent are actually called circular functions because they come from a circle. Be careful, a lot of people will think the equation for a circle itself is a circular function. That's not true. An actual equation for a circle comes from a cone and that's called conic. Now, the key thing here we want to talk about are period functions. The, these circular functions have periods that they repeat themselves. And circular function with values that repeat at regular intervals. Remember, we just talked about sine and cosine, how often they repeat themselves. They repeat every two pieces of pi. Now, the tangent, we noticed, has a pattern that repeats every pi units. So we can actually use this to our advantage to figure out more complicated problems dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent. Now here's an example of how we can use the periodicity theorem, which tells us there's repeating patterns to sine, cosine, and tangent. They want to know here, is the cosine of x equal to the cosine of x plus 6 pi? Well, here's what you want to do. Just pick a particular angle you want to look at for x, and it can be anything. Maybe I'm going to say x is 30 degrees. So let's assume x is 30 degrees, and I just go to the graph paper and find 30 degrees. And I want to know the cosine, so the cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, what if I find the cosine, or the x value, of that same angle of x, which is 30 degrees, but this time I add 6 pieces of pi to it? What's the answer? Well, let me show you. What we're going to do is move the angle of 30 degrees right there. Now I'm going to add 6 pieces of pi. Be careful, that's going to be three circular rotations. So here's a 30 degrees, now plus, that's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. I actually land back where I started. What's the cosine of that? The square root of 3 over 2. Is this a true statement? Yes, it's actually true. That's how you can use the periodicity theorem. Let's try it with tangent. Well, let's do the tangent of x, and let's just use 30 degrees again. So I'm going to imagine that's 30 degrees. So if I go to 30 degrees, which is right here, the tangent of that, we'll just jot it down right here, would be sine over cosine. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Um, now let's just go ahead and do this. What if we take the find the tan of 30 degrees, because I chose that, plus 3 pieces of pi. Okay, so I'm going to move my 30 degrees, which is here, and then add three pieces of pi. So that's one half a circle, that's one, two, three. I would land right here. The tangent at this point is sine negative one half over negative the square root of three over two. The two negatives will cancel, so we're going to get this. Now clearly, as a final answer, these are complex fractions and I have to simplify them, but as you can tell, these two are the exact same thing. So yes, here again, it's actually a true statement. Okay, let's look at a more complicated one. Use the periodicity theorem to find the cosine of 2,670. It's a pretty big number. Easiest way to do this is to figure out where, how many times we go around the circle. So I'm going to do 2,670 divided by 360. That actually is 7.4167. So what that is, is I'm going to take out seven circles. So let's do 360 times seven. That's actually going to give me 2,520. So let's take that and subtract it from 2,670. And that's going to leave me left over with 150 degrees. So really, this question is the same as asking me, what is the cosine of 150 degrees? Let me prove it to you. 
I'm actually going to move 2,670 degrees. I have to do seven circle rotations first, so here we go. There's a 360, 720, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven circles, and then an extra 150 at the end is going to land me right here. So this is where I land. If I was diligent in my counting, 2,670 degrees would land me here. But I don't want to do that. I want to make this as simple as possible. So again, the key is I pulled out as many circles as I could. I was able to pull out seven complete circles, which was 2,520 degrees. If you take that from our original total, we're really saying move 150. Now answer the question, what's the cosine? The answer here is negative square root of 3 over 2. So the periodicity theorem can help you take really large numbers and look at them in a much smaller, easier perspective. Here's another way to look at the periodicity theorem in terms of a different perspective. Here they have, they've given us that the cosine of 2.3 radians is equal to negative 0.666. Find three other values that have the cosine of an angle is equal to negative 0.666. So they want us to find other angles that would go into here and give us this cosine value. Now I'm going to show you how to do it on the unit circle since we're used to doing that. Remember, they're telling us the cosine of an angle has to be negative 0.666. That means the x value and we don't know the y. Now, where's that going to happen? If we go the x value of negative 0.666, it's going to be somewhere in here. Now, here's the key. Notice on this problem, they want the cosine of a theta. Here they've actually told us which one they're looking at. So they are looking at 2.3 radians. So that means I have to do the radius 2.3 times. So do they want us to have the y value? Do we want to go up to look at this point or down to look at this point? Um, they both are going to have the same x value. But which one do you want? Well, this just means, again, the radius being laid out. So remember, 1 is about 57 degrees. So that's 1. Here's 2. So they really are talking about the 1 in quadrant 2. So this just tells you basically, look at the 1 in quadrant 2 and not the 1 in quadrant 3. This is 2.3 radian lengths. Now we can just do it normally because that's the movement. Um, what other values could theta be to get me there? Well, what you could do is you can actually move 2.3 radians and land here. Well, if we're at 2.3 radians, why don't we just do another uh, full circle rotation from that spot? So if I moved here originally at 2.3, let's add another full circle, which will land me back here. Well, what do we call that? Well, that was 2.3 radians plus we moved two pieces of pi. Now, 2 pi as, a radian, as an approximate radian is 6.28. So it's 2.3 plus 6.28. So here, another way to land there would be to say go 8.58 radians. Okay. Another possible way you could do it is you could subtract the 2 pi. So remember here we added it. Why don't we say take 2.3 and minus 2 pi? Well, again, 2.2 pi as a decimal is uh, 6.28. If you do this subtraction, you're going to get negative 3.983 radians is a second way to get there. Now, a third spot that might have that same answer is why don't I go to this movement here and I could go down and do this one too. Um, it might be a little bit trickier to estimate it. It's easier to be very consistent and just add the 2 pi or subtract the 2 pi. But let me show you how you could use this cosine graph over here to do the same thing. I think the unit circle look for this is actually easier. But here's what the cosine graph says. It's fine 2.3 radians on here. 
and that's going to be somewhere between um, pi over 2 and 1 pi. And where that's going to be is roughly about here. So if you scroll down on the graph, that's where we hit the graph. So the question is, where else do you hit the graph at that point? Well, if you draw a line through that red point, you're going to see the multiple answers. Uh, one of the answers is right here. This guy right here that's in the blue is actually that point on the unit circle. Um, where is the full rotation plus another? Uh, we're going to, I'll show you where that one is if I graph this uh, cosine function go down further, it's right there. So this intersection point is the one that mimics one complete rotation and right there. Now if we go backwards and we land at this point, the backwards landing at that point is going to actually be right here on this graph. So uh, this one here, this one here, and this one here are the three that we found on the circle. It's a little bit harder to read the exact details from the actual cosine graph that's on the Algebra 2 graph paper. Again, almost easier to look at it on the unit circle.